Grace and peace to all of you. We, the pastors of Asbury, Foundry, Mount Vernon Place, and John Wesley, have come together in response to the death of George Floyd, the collective pain we are feeling, and the unrest in our city and nation. It is our hope that this time of prayer will begin our healing and spur us forward as justice seekers. We find ourselves in a too familiar place, mourning the death of another unarmed black man. George Floyd was senselessly murdered over a week ago by Minneapolis police officer, Derek Chauvin, who suffocated Mr. Floyd with a knee on his neck while he was already subdued. We lament his brutal abuse and inhumane death. We lament with his family and friends and community, and we scream, enough.
The call for dismantling racism. Hear these words from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and 26 and 27. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in God's image. In the image of God, they were created. Male and female were they created. Let us pray. Creator God, you have signed your name on all flesh, created us in your own image, crafted us to reflect with one another your love, your mutuality, justice, creativity, and grace. Those of us with power and privilege have distorted and abused your beautiful design for human relationship. We have allowed and participated in the creation and continuation of systems that harm and seek to dehumanize black and brown siblings in our human family. We beseech you that by the power of your spirit, those long or newly awake to the reality of systemic racism will sustain the energy, commitment, and perseverance to dismantle every structure that perpetuates it. May we not be conformed to racist thought systems, but rather transformed by the truth of our shared dignity and humanity. Help us teach our children well. Guide us in efforts to dismantle racist policies and practices in healthcare, housing, lending, hiring, policing, sentencing, education, city planning, and every other institution in our land. Give all your people righteous anger to rise up and tear down systems that perpetuate racist profiling and a culture in which your beloved ones are fearful for their lives and the lives of their children because they know the color of their skin makes them vulnerable to violence of both body and spirit. In your mercy, forgive where we need forgiveness. Shield and protect our hurting and weary siblings of color. Make us all willing to do hard things and to release bland niceness so that peace with justice might emerge. 
when we falter or fail, come to our assistance to keep us on the path. Show us the way to embody your perfect love, freed from the sin of racism. We pray in the power of the Lord of all life. Amen. Let's pause for a moment of silence. Amen. The call for peace. A reading from Micah chapter six, verses six through eight. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? God has told you, O oh mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice? and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Let us pray. No justice, no peace. Your children have repeated the words for decades on city streets and suburban landscapes. And here we are once more praying for peace. We're not praying for the absence of conflict or war, though we long for that reality in every pocket of your world. We are instead pleading with you for the peace that comes when justice is done. We're longing for peace that saturates our souls, we have a safe place to lay our heads at night, when we have access to the medical care we need, when there's plenty of food for every belly, when we have permanent employment, when we know we have elected leaders who govern with compassion, generosity, and mercy, with an eye on every person in this nation, or the jurisdiction, and simply not only himself. When any person can go running at any time, day or night, when police women and men are not only easily identifiable with a badge and a number, but always known for protecting the safety of all people. When we can put up a tent, in any campground without worrying whether our son is safe. When we know our children are secure, whether at work, school, or play. When black lives matter and racism, violence, and brutality are no more. And when all of these ordinary aspects of life are a reality, a given, every person in this nation, come almighty God and show us our role in bringing about just filled peace. Amen. The call for justice. We hear God's word in the Gospel of Luke, the fourth chapter, verse 18 through 19. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. 
he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the per prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Let us pray. The spirit of the Lord is upon us. He granted us that gift of grace through the saving grace of your son, Jesus Christ. Utilize all your believers, O oh gracious God, for the opportunity to stand up, to speak up, to rise up against injustices of the world, just as you did way back there in the land of Jerusalem to help set your people free. Your word reminds us who the sun sets free is free indeed. For all ethnicities to stand for the cause of humanity, specifically for all Black Lives Matter, that we, O oh gracious God, may be the liberators, the deliverers, the healers of your people and of your land. Help us, O oh gracious God, to continue to allow justice to roll down like a river and utilize us for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you pause for a moment of silence for those who have lost their lives, not only to gun violence, but also at the hands of police officers. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. You are invited to respond to God's word for eight minutes and 46 seconds. George Floyd pleaded for his life. We enter now into a time of prayer. Pray silently or write out your prayer petition or share your prayers through our live chat.
we can take one more step to journey the road of justice seekers dismantling racism by giving the color of change at www.colorofchange.org. Let us affirm our commitment as justice seekers. God in the spirit revealed in Jesus Christ calls us by grace to be renewed in the image of our creator, that we may be one in divine love for the world. Today is the day God cares for the integrity of creation, wills the healing and wholeness of all life, weeps at the plunder of Earth's goodness. And so shall we. Today is the day. God embraces all hues of humanity, delights in diversity and difference, favors solidarity, transforming strangers into friends. And so shall we. Today is the day. God cries with the masses of starving people despises growing disparity between rich and poor, demands justice for workers in the marketplace. And so shall we. Today is the day God deplores violence in our homes and streets, rebukes, rebukes the world's warring madness, humbles the powerful and lifts up the lowly. And so shall we. Today is the day God calls for nations and peoples to live in peace, celebrates where justice and mercy embrace, exalts when the wolf grazes with the lamb. And so shall we. Today is the day God brings good news to the poor. Claims release to the captives. Gives sight to the blind and sets the oppressed free. And so shall we. And so shall we. And so shall we. And so shall we.
now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace and go to love and to serve your neighbor. Amen. <laughs>